You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. So be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike, options pricing and analysis software. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. Visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. For more information, please visit FTSERussell.com. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody, welcome back to TWIFO This Week in Futures Options, a program where we break it all down, the week that was and indeed still is on the futures options side of the fence. So we're talking all sorts of fun stuff, maybe some equities, maybe some metals, some ags, some crude oil, you name it. We're talking about it here on TWIFO This Week. My name is Mark Longo. If I sound a little bit different, because I'm not coming at you from our studio in Chicago, no, no, no. I am on a little bit of a birthday sojourn to the south here, listeners. Actually, to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Getting a little bit of an early sneak preview here of the Star Wars Galaxy Edge Land before it opens to the public and opens to the masses. So, but we like you guys here on Twifo. We want to make sure you guys still get your dose of Twifo. So, we're going to do a nice quick hit for you today on the show. Let's kick it off. Let's break down what was lighting it up. What was moving and shaking this week out here on the old CME? And let's kick it off. Let's look at the top movers and shakers for the week here. Let's look at the upside first. Let's be positive. Let's kick things off positive. Why not? And the top movers, number five, we've got Palladium at 3.2% to the upside. Number four is the S&P Midcap 400. Don't say that too often here on the program, up about 3.2%. It's all pretty tight range this week for what was the key mover. Number three is Arbob. Good old Arbob gas up 3.3%. And pretty much a tie for number one goes to the Russell 2000 E-Mini and Brent, both up at about 3.4% to the upside. So weird stuff afoot there on the old Brent. So let's, or I should say on the old upside. Let's keep on rolling, though, and see what else we can get moving here on the show. I want to make sure you guys can hear me here. So let's do a quick little a little adjusting of the old volume here for 
the Southern Studio. Make sure you guys get good sound. There we go. I think that should be a little bit better. It's coming in a little bit hot there. All right. That's a little bit better. Let's keep on rolling here. Let's look at the downside now. Let's go to the dark side here. Pun intended. Given where I am, it's appropriate. All right. Now let's do to the bottom here. We got number five. Class 3 milk off, not quite 3%, 2.3, 2 2.9%, I should say, to the downside. Number 4, rough rice, and we gap down a bit, down 3.75%. Number 3, lean hogs, our old friend hog love, not getting a lot of love this week, off 4.1%. Then iron ore, another one of our old friends. You guys asked us about iron ore recently. Did a little bit of a dive. Not much options action going on in iron ore. Number 2 to the downside there, down 4.2%. And the number 1 name to the downside this week, the euro dollar off nearly 7%, 6.9%. Let's kick it off. We were talking about the upside here. Let's keep the upside trend going. Let's stay positive. Let's go with our number one here, or I should say our tie for number one to the upside here, which is the Russell 2000. Let's pull it up here for the week. Coming into showtime here, we're seeing an interesting market. The broad equity market's kind of mixed today, and we're seeing vol. Similar beast, actually, from our last show, Pretty much unched <laughs> VIX itself at about a 17. Uh, we're seeing VVIX, aka the volatility of volatility, down about three points, so right around 100. So still triple digits, still lofty, but not quite as effervescent, shall we say, as it has been of late. And then we're seeing our old friend VXX off about to about 25.8, and our old friend RVX, which is of course the Russell. 2000 volatility down quite a bit down four um, 4.1 points actually from where it was last week down to about 20.1 that means that spread has widened out again that vix rvx spread we talked last week and then the studio about how tight it was now pretty wide wide by about wider about by a half point to about three three point one points there going on out there speaking of volatility our old buddy mr eric norland has been on the show a lot it's got a great piece coming out actually just recently, just this week, over there at CME. You can find it for yourself. CMEgroup.com is the place to go. Slash Twifo is the place to go to get the report for this show. Otherwise, just click on the homepage there. You'll see Mr. Eric and Blue and the rest of the crew there uh, cranking away, doing yeoman's work over there, talking about volatility this time, talking about is higher vol making a comeback? And he writes about how, as he terms it, long dormant volatility is beginning to stir anew <laughs> like eric <laughs> he's always never afraid of putting a little bit of a little bit of descriptive flavor into his work shall we say long dormant volatility begins to stir anew across several asset classes uh, he mentions how the fed's rate hikes could still be causing issues out there in equity land uh copper and the metals still undecided gold and silver volatility heading north uh, so a lot of things uh, to break down here in the space before we get more into that let's get into what's lighting it up over here in the russell 2000 number cme group.com slash twifo is the place to go for our number one upside mover of the week here let's see russell coming into the show time here about 15 11 it's come off a little bit since that scan was run <laughs> this morning there but still looking uh, looking pretty good here and let's see number one in terms of lighting it up out here a pretty light week, actually, volume-wise. Not a heck lighting it up. At 15.11, we got the scene. Looks like 14.05 puts seem to be the order of the day. Actually, I take that back. Going far out all the way to November. You see the 900 puts getting some love out there, which is kind of strange to be. <laughs> to be. It's been kind of the order of the day for a while out here in the Russell 2000. It's, it's far out of the money puts. Far out and far out of the money. Far out in terms of time. Far out in terms of in the moneyness as well. Uh, combining to be the kind of uh, the leading trade out here. Let's look at the skew really quickly before we keep on rolling. Let's go to a contract that has a little bit more meat. Let's go out about a month. Let's go out to September and let's see how things are looking. The puts were 16.5% rich to at the money last week. Coming at the showtime, they are whopping 16.4. So kind of unched and 13.4% cheap to the at the money were the calls. This week, they're fif- almost 15%, 14.7%. So the calls coming in. Puts staying about the same out here for the Russell 2000. So despite we had some movement out here, not a lot lighting it up net volatility or skew wise. Let's keep on rolling. We're just talking about the metals. Maybe let's dive on into the metals and see what's going on out there in that neck of the woods. Let's pull up here. Gold. Remember, you guys can do this for yourselves on the drop down. Go into the asset class. Choose metals. Then go precious. Grab yourself some gold 
and you're off to the races. All right, here we go. I like to, now this is a matter of personal preference. I like to choose select all when I'm looking at these asset classes because I like to see everything. When I'm doing a show for you guys, I want to make sure I see every nugget that's lighting it up out there. But some people, Nick included, who's the creator of the software, likes to do just the view that it loads up with. He thinks that gives you more of a convenient snapshot. So to each their own. But me, I like to go deep, and maybe you guys are the same way. Gold coming into showtime here uh, off about not quite a full percent, pretty close. Still north of the 1500 level, 1503 Point eight coming into showtime here. We were just talking about volatility. Uh, Eric in his report breaking down gold. Gold also lighting up the tape this week just from uh, CME putting out this week. Uh, gold open interest hitting an all-time high of over 1.8 million contracts. That was on August 20th, so just two days ago. Uh, also seeing implied elevated out there since June. That kind of dovetails with what Eric's been saying out here. Looking, he has an interesting chart. I recommend you check it out in his piece, listeners, called Gold Option Volatility. May have hit a bottom and could begin trending upward. And he has a chart of the gold volatility slash yield curve cycle. And it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff here in different zones here with recession versus early recovery versus mid and late expansion. Indeed, I encourage you, if you're a gold trader, uh, check that one out. Let's move on to what's been lighting it up out here this week. The vol talking about being elevated this week, taking a little bit of a break. A vol in pretty hard, actually. It looks like over a point kind of across the board in a lot of the major, major contracts here. Uh, speaking of the major contracts, looks like the big, big player for the week with just a little bit over 25% of the volume was out there in November. It was kind of a bit of a, of a struggle, almost 25% for September, but November e- eking it out with uh, 25.6%. So we'll start there. And the big print out here for the week, though, actually was back in September. It was the SEP 1480 puts doing 9,200 contracts. That's a pretty decent print here for gold. Remember, we had about a 1503 coming into showtime. So again, a lot of gold bugs out there. They get nervous when we see moves to the downside. So a lot of a lot of scrambling perhaps to hedge let's see of that 92 9300 5400 going up this morning going up today so a lot of that action coming today so it's kind of hard to parse the oi for the rest of the week the rest of the week 2095 went up on monday about 1000 on tuesday and 800 and change on wednesday so again by far the lion's share going up today we'll stay tuned to see how that oi plays out but uh, of the oi that's already gone up Slightly opening, about a thousand of that opening. So again, not surprising. We're seeing a little bit of downside recently in gold after a big run up. People looking to hedge. Not exactly a crazy, crazy paper out here. Let's go out a little bit farther. That was number one. Number two, also not surprisingly, coming on the put side of the ledger. It was a 1475 puts, so maybe some related paper. It's about 3300 going up today out there as well. The rest kind of evenly scattered throughout the week. About opening as well, about a thousand opening there. So downside puts, kind of the order of the day out here in gold. Let's look really quickly. Actually, it wasn't all puts though, listeners. If you go out to October, the 1530 calls. That remember October was the leading volume month this week and leading volume contract. So let's see what the big print out here was. It was a 50. 1530 calls going up 5,400 times the lion's share a big print of about 4,600 going up on Tuesday actually so a lot of big single day prints driving the action out here in gold this week uh, interesting stuff and let's go number four uh, very quickly looks like it's the 1650 calls 4,700 of those and round out the top five here we got looks like 15 quarter calls going up for over actually take that back 1,800 calls and Deese taking the number five spot here with 4,200 going up, uh, 3,700 of that yesterday. So a big print out there in the 1,800s. Uh, looks like maybe one of our ratio friends was back, even though the rest of the paper doesn't seem like it lines up that well. But the 1,800s in Deese, if you wanted some far upside in gold, you saw it at least yesterday. Let's keep on rolling here, listeners, with this. Uh, abbreviated intergalactic birthday edition <laughs> of Twifo. Move on to another name that was moving. Brent was moving uh, this week. Let's see. We didn't see a huge commensurate move in WTI, but you guys love yourselves some WTI. So Brent's lighting it up. Uh, you guys are usually intrigued 
by WTI. So let's pull that up again. Energy listeners in the drop down, then go to crude oil. And you obviously want crude oil American, WTI. <laughs> WTI American. Don't go to the other contract in there because there's not a lot of paper lighting it up in that one over there. All right, there we go. And we pull that up. We'll see here. Coming into showtime, we're at about a 55 and a quarter out there in WTI. So still north of that ever precious, much watched 55 level, but not exactly blowing through 60 or anything like that this week. We're up about not quite one percent, about three quarters of a percent here on the week. A vol also coming in here a little bit, I guess, when we're not sustaining another aggressive move. They're taking. We've heard this before from the market makers on this show. And when they're not not uh, not sustaining a move, they're going to come for it, and they came for it this week here. Pretty hard looking at some of these contracts, even out going out as far as a, a month or so, or even yeah, about a month to uh, the OC contracts and beyond. Uh, looking pretty hard about the vol coming in over three points. Uh, just in that OC contract alone. So crushing the vol very aggressively. This is the point we've made before when Russell's been on the show in the past about how, you know, from a, as a volatility product, crude oil goes a little unheralded. People don't really talk about it too much, but yet it has had a lot of interesting moves out there in implied volatility of late. So let's see what else is lighting it up here. We've got, uh, yeah, OC, it's just me, October off about three over three points from a vol perspective uh, november off about two points and then dece off about two points as well so coming for the vol pretty hard this week most of that action coming out here in the october contract listeners 52 percent of the paper out here so pretty much the lion's share by far here let's look in the out here yeah about 50 puts were the order of the day. So again, we're at 55 listeners. People looking to hedge that downside maybe or draw that line in the sand at the 50 strike. Either way, they were lighting it up this week. About 4,600 on Monday, about 2,000 on Tuesday, 3,700 Wednesday, 1,700 today. Total of a little north of 12,000. Biased pretty strongly to the opening, about 3,000 of that opening. Obviously, we don't know about today's paper. Uh, so the 50 puts, number one with a bullet out here. Followed, though. Not that, not that far behind with nearly 12,000, 11,780 of the 60 calls in the same month here. Going up the lion's share of the day. Actually, on Tuesday, 5,100 on Tuesday, 3,600 on Monday. And let's see, about 1,200 today, 1,800 yesterday. Total of about 11,780. All right here. Let's keep on rolling very quickly. Let's look at some other content. 62 calls. Also getting some love out in October. About 8,000. The lion's share. Actually looks like pretty much a tie. 2,800 on Monday and about 2,800 on Wednesday. So no clear bias there. Number four. We've got the 53 puts doing 6,800. The lion's share coming on Monday. 2,800 going out there. And then for number five, we actually have to go out a little bit. We have to go out to Dece. D65 calls doing about 6,200 contracts there, taking the number 5 spot. Let's scroll out a little bit. We'd like to look and see if any interesting apparent paper out here. 70 calls, getting some love in March of next year, doing 1,200 contracts out there and beyond that. Any other funky prints? 40 puts? So if Dece 2020 if, if 50 is not bearish enough for you, you want to go out to 40. Someone beat you to the punch doing it nearly 2,000 times on the 40 puts out here this week. So interesting paper out here as we go farther out, but not a ton going far, far out. Interesting. Interesting out here. Let's see what else you guys have in store for us here. Yeah, of course, the crude, a lot of that narrative being dominated by what's going on tomorrow, the Jackson Hole, the big the big presser coming out of Jackson Hole. Folks looking for a little bit of a clearer picture on the domestic rate cycle. And that, of course, plays into crude, plays into equities, plays into a lot of things. Obviously, plays into rates, plays into metals, and it plays into crude as well. Obviously, how that strength and weakness of the dollar, how that plays out, is a big driver for crude demand out here. Of course, we've seen IEA uh, it has been lowering their forecasts for world demand for a while now. So... <laughs> We'll see if what we hear tomorrow coming out of Jackson Hole, if that reinforces that or maybe if it changes the narrative a little bit. Either way, we're seeing interesting stuff. Also, Iran uh, threatening, once again, the international waterway, saying if their exports are cut to zero, then international waterways will not be safe. So all of that's maybe combining to give a little bit of support 
to crude. We also saw inventories out in Oklahoma falling by one and a half million barrels. Those stockpiles coming down a little bit, that also could lead a little bit of a little bit of room to some upside there for crude. Let's look here a little bit as well before we keep on. Actually, you know, you guys, as you are want to do, you always <laughs> Always have some products you want us to talk about here on the show as well. So maybe we'll get some of you rotated onto the show on this truncated birthday spectacular edition. Some of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider radio network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, everybody. Welcome to your Futures Options Feedback. As always, you guys are sending in the products you want us to feature on the show this week. So let's see if we can get to a couple of them here. First off, pull it up here as we see the question. There we go. All right. First question we've got from... Jack T. Jack T wants to know, can you do a rundown of pound USD option activity from this week? Thanks to the program. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish it was every day. Well, every day I wish. <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, a lot of effort. Also, it doesn't really fit with the naming convention of <laughs> Twifo this week in futures options uh, because that's what it is this weekend. Uh, daily is a little bit of a different beast. Uh, that would be. We see how hard it is to wrangle people's schedules once a week, let alone daily. But yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll do some more updates down the road intraday for you guys to get you. You more. I know you have a lot of you out there want your crude options fix or your futures options fix. We'll see what we can do. Maybe get you more of that. As for pound USD, you guys can play along, listeners. Go on out to your seemegroup.com slash twifo. Select FX and then go to pound US dollar and you'll find it out there coming to showtime. It's up not quite one percent, but pretty close. That's that uh, pound USD, and we're looking here at about now 1.22. Well, so 1.225 is kind of our at the money strike out here right now. Vol seems uh, pretty robust, not surprising. A lot of at play at work out here in the FX space. These days, so given vol actually a pretty firm lift, it's like a, pretty much across most of the early and going all the way out to decent and beyond. Every contract is up about a point, if not more, from an at the money vol perspective. So, a little bit of juice getting shot back in here on the old pound USD in terms of where the action was this week. Looks like it was out here in the SEP, uh, SEP contract doing 30, about a third. Exactly of the paper out here, but again, options volume wise, that isn't it isn't the biggest product out here. Let's look at actually, it looks like it was uh, Ock with the, the one and quarter calls were the number one trade, even though it uh, looks like uh, SEP was about a third of the paper. Ock doing about twenty percent. A lot of that coming in these one and a quarter calls going up, not quite a thousand times, nine hundred forty nine again. Not the biggest options product out here. Lion's share of that, pretty much all of that coming on Tuesday, listeners. 829 coming on Tuesday. The rest kind of scattered throughout the week. So that's our biggest print out here. In terms of how the SKU's lining up, let's go back out. Now, SEP is only two weeks away. I hate to I hate to parse it. Let's go out to the OC then and let's see what's what's things are looking like from a SKU perspective out there. You got about a month and a half left in that contract. A little bit more meat there. The puts were nearly 5% rich, they at the money. Now they're at about 7.8%. So getting a lot of bid to the puts out there on the pound USD, as well as the calls. They were nearly 2% cheap, they at the money. Calls coming in, or should say getting a lift uh, pretty aggressively. They're pretty much even now. They're about 0.1% cheap, so pretty much even 
to add the money. So you got looks like a nice little kind of flat wing there from the add the money up to the call wing and getting a nice bid there uh, to the puts, which is kind of interesting. So both uh, both wings getting a bit of a lift, a little bit of smile action, even though it's biased to the puts here this week in pound USD. All right, we'll see if you guys have any other any other products you want us to hit here on this quick quick birthday edition of the show here. You see, love you guys so much. It's our birthday. Still recording here. <laughs> Nothing can stop the Twifo train, perhaps except an avalanche, which is the name of our next uh, our next listener here. Mr. or Mrs. Avalanche, we don't know, uh, asking, what's up in the wheat pit these days? Big volume with the trade war, put love or call love? Let's find out, Mr. or Mrs. Avalanche. You guys know the drill by now. CMEgroup.com slash Twifo. Hit that drop down. Go on out to the ag tab and then we're clicking on there we go grains and oil seeds all right we're going for a good old srw wheat that's where we're looking out here this week and we're seeing let's see decent paper out here this week uh, the contract at about 467 coming into uh, the later portion of the show here so off not quite one percent but uh, close to it not a huge move out here in wheat this week. We've seen bigger, obviously, this week. It wasn't wasn't the big driver out here. Vol looks like a bit of a mixed bag, nearer portion of the curve, so mostly gamma. Things two weeks and less. They're getting a little bit of a lift. Beyond that, it gets uh, Vol coming in a little bit, including in that OC contract off over a point, about a one and a one and an eighth points, and then it kind of uh, getting gets a lift a bit again towards the end out there into 2020. Those contracts getting a bit of a lift as well. So bit of a funky term structure from a vol perspective out here in wheat this week in terms of where the action was i said we had a 467 coming into this portion of the show the big print was in now the uh the sep contract that has about a day to go so pretty much a weekly that's where all the action was this week 42 percent of it coming in that contract and the big trade were the 50 excuse me 460 puts again not surprising doing about 5400 contracts 1400 monday 1600 tuesday about a thousand on wednesday and 1400 today so pretty fairly even throughout the week volume wise that was our big big number one with a bullet here the number two of the 465 calls doing about 3100 contracts almost 3100 as well for the 480s that's number three number four we've got looks like the 470 calls almost 3100 there as well so kind of a nice little tight call strip 465 480 470 all doing close to 3100 contracts and then number five here is actually the puts the 520 puts again all that same contract that same expiration cycle doing 500 excuse me 520 puts doing 2000 almost 2100 here the almost all of that coming on monday 2040 the rest paltry amount scattered throughout the rest of the week uh let's see interestingly enough we also saw 2040 of these uh dece puts going up as well on the 530 puts so maybe that's a bit of a roll listeners because 2040 that's an oddly specific also went up on monday so looks like it might have been a bit of a roll from sep out from sep actually no i take that back from sep out to looks like july actually of 2020 so that's a bit of a long roll if that is indeed the case uh 520 puts out to 530 puts so rolling far out and a little bit tighter a little bit farther out, 5.30. That's interesting, given that those are in the money. <laughs> or he could be closing a time spread that he has on as well. Let's Actually, let's see. We, I think we have the OI for that July contract. The OI changed because it went up earlier in the week. So let us see. I mean, there we go. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, it was opening. So interesting, interesting stuff afoot here in wheat. You know, we don't talk eggs as much. And when we do, we typically lead with corn. But wheat... There's been another interesting one, and we talked about beans a lot, obviously, as well, because they were very much ground zero for all things. Yes, they were opening this week, those 530 puts. So uh, interesting stuff out here in wheat. So, yeah, we talk beans, and then we sometimes talk corn. Don't get to wheat as often, so I'm glad to have that question. Uh, TL, TLT writing in this week. I think we've seen similar questions before, getting this question again this week. Have you seen any more interest in WTI skew? 
Uh, I'm, I'm assuming he means call skew. <laughs> we just talked about it. Uh, the calls are, you know, the call skew in W2. I know a lot of you want to hear that, you know, the worm has turned and things are changing and there's a huge bid for upside in WTI right now. And yet uh, we're not seeing that yet. It's not. Well, you know, this show will be the first to tell you when indeed we do see it. We don't have any bias in either direction. We don't want the calls to be cheap. We don't want it to be expensive. We have no we have no view either way. We just want to report the information to you guys. And so far, we're not seeing that call love materialize yet out here in WTI. The check and that changes, TLT and everybody else. We will let you guys know. Tell you what, I'll pull it up again right now, really quickly before we before we got to wrap this abbreviated birthday edition up here. But let's do it really quickly. Let's go on out. All right, we talked about a little bit of the, of the skew. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's go to let's go to where Sander heads. Let's go to Dees. Dees in WTI right now, listeners. The puts were eight point eight percent rich to the at the money this week. Last week, this week they're eight point six percent rich to the at the money. So effectively unched. The calls were 7% cheap to the at the money this week. Or last week, this week, they were almost 8%, 7.7% cheap. So they actually got cheaper. They did not get a bit. This is Dece. Only about 20% of the paper went up in Dece in that uh, in that contract this week, listeners. So in that expiration cycle. So bear that in mind. But not seeing the move that everyone wants to see, unfortunately. We'll let you know. Well, we have our eyes peeled to WTI call skew. The second that changes, we will let you know. Maybe we'll even put an intraday alert out for you guys so you can see it because you guys want it so badly. I hear you. I see your email. I see your tweets and everything else. It's just unfortunately not happening. All right here. We've got Goose wants to know how the Russell products are doing for the rest of 2019 since the reconstitution. We kind of just did a bit of a breakdown of that. Uh, Recon we talked about last week. Recon's a weird event in the sense. A lot of you, a lot of you want to know what it means from a volatility perspective. Maybe she means that as well here. And we talked about that last week on the show where it's not uh, it's not a big vol event because <laughs> it happens. At, it's designed not to be. It happens after the bell. Volume wise, it's huge. Just the biggest trading day of the year, trading event of the year, really by far. It blows the doors off anything else. So it moves a lot of a lot of numbers, moves a lot of paper. But vol wise, not too not too much. It doesn't really affect. The uh, the net performance. I mean, if they add some really high flyers, maybe it could. But so far, at least, we haven't seen a huge change, uh, and we've seen you know Russell still kind of up to its old tricks, <laughs> which is uh, makes it a little interesting. Which is why it's moving. It's moving to the upside this week, and we're seeing interesting interesting things abound. I'm looking forward to getting back in touch with uh, Sean and them next week. See what they're seeing out there in Russell land. Maybe I'll put this question to him, Goose. So I will maybe table this one for him, so he could maybe he has some interesting nuggets. That he wants to contribute. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for this birthday edition, this intergalactic birthday edition of Twifo. I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, and subscribing. We're sending those questions, those products. You guys love to have your products featured on the show. Hit us up. We'll try to get as many on as we can when we're not traveling intergalactically for some birthday extravaganzas. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for Volatility Views. And then back next week, we do it all again, back on Thursday for a little bit of the old Twifo. We'll see you then. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike, options pricing and analysis software. Quick Strike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy to use web based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E-1. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. 
For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. Investors in the U.S. and around the world are using FTSE Russell indexes to benchmark their investment performance and create investment funds, ETFs, structured products, and index-based derivatives. Many Options Insider Radio Network listeners will be familiar with the Russell 2000 Index. Russell 2000 Futures and Options are currently trading on the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME group. For more information, please visit ftserussell.com, cboe.com, and cmegroup.com. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.